Hello there good people and welcome to the third video on the Tikinta Python graphic user interface package. In this video we're going to look at getting the user input with entry widgets. So when you need a little bit of text from the user, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it in using something called an entry box, okay, or an entry widget. Now, this is just for small, it's a small text box, just so someone can type into it. It's great for creating forms and stuff like that. However, it's done in exactly the same way that we've seen in our labels so far in video one and two. And now, we're gonna create a new entry box. So the first thing I'm going to do is declare my variable and give it the value of TK entry. All right, I've got my starter code. It's the same every time. Import the package, create the window, pack your widgets in, do the pack, and then woof, window dot main loop. Here we go. All right. So there's my entry. Now in the entry box, I want you can well we know what FG is now. The foreground. We're going to set the text color, and I'm going to set the text color to white. All right, and my background is going to be nice. Let's just do black for now. Uh, foreground and background is all set. And I'm going to apply a width to it as well. So width goes in there. And remember, this is text units. So let's go 50. Oh, let's go 50. And don't forget, with the entry, we're going to have to pack this in. And let's have a look at the results of this. And doesn't that look wonderful? At the moment, you can't see anything, but if I type some text, you can see it go in there, right? Nothing happens, you can press enter, and press whatever you want, nothing will happen, because we've not told it to happen. Now what we can do is make this a little bit more interesting by creating my label equals tk.label, just like we saw in the last video, and give it some text there. Let's say please enter your name. And what we need to do is pack this in first. So label.pack, bracket, bracket, and off we go. Run that again. Let's just see the output now. It's always good just to test exactly what's going on. So it says, please enter your name. It goes in there. And if you want, you can, you can jazz this up if you wanted to and use the same properties as your entry box. Let's put them in there. Again, you can run it again. Now it'll all fit in and look quite fancy, smart. Look at that. Oh, oh, look at that. Now I've not set the width. Okay, so the width should really be set to 50. So I can do that. Width equals 50. Okay, let's see if that's the same. Now it's interesting. Remember, this is text. We're using the text width. Hmm, so it's interesting, that isn't it? Again, I can explain in the last video, it uses um, position zero to space everything out. So it's a little bit strange. Now we can realign this when we use different methods instead of pack, but for now, it works. It does the job, doesn't it? It does the job. Now there's a couple of things that I needed to be aware of is we can use the entry box, but we need to be able to interrogate and retrieve information, delete information, or insert information into the entry box. So there's a couple of things you can do. And the first one, is retrieving data. And to retrieve, we use the dot get method that we'll use in a second. The second one, we can delete the data. And the third one, we can insert text using the dot insert method. So there are three methods that you can apply. And what I'd like to do now is introduce a button. It's going to be a temporary button, so I'll call it btn temp, and it's going to have the properties of tk.button. Now, I've not seen these before, but buttons have properties much like everything else, everything else as well. Now, we put some text inside there. This is a button. Separate with a comma. And don't forget, in order to run this, we need to pack the button in place. So I'll just say btn temp dot pack bracket bracket. Run my program. And you'll see there we've got a default button that does absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. 
Now, the reason why the button doesn't do anything is because we've not told it to do anything explicitly. So there's a command feature that comes with buttons and it says, well, okay, if you click this button, what do you want to do? Now, after the command, normally what we do is we tell it, we tell the command button to um, run a procedure. And to create a procedure in Python, we've got to think, where is it going to go? It needs to have already um, run this code first and gone past the procedure that I'm going to create. So I'll, I'll probably advise above your Tikinta code here. So if I put def run, I'll say run entry, bracket, bracket, and a colon goes in there. It automatically indents, which is good for us. And now what I need to say is, okay, every time the button is clicked, I'm gonna print out, hi, John. Okay. Now the command is obviously a red line because it says, well, what do you wanna run? If you click it, what do you want to run? I'll say run entry. Now you don't need to put speed, uh, brackets at the back of this because it already expects it to be a procedure. There's my console and there's my program. Now every time I click this button, it's gonna say, hi John, hi John, hi John. Keep clicking it and it'll print out as many times. Every time I click it, it runs the command. Now obviously that's great, but nah, I don't, I don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna call it entry output. And that's going to say whatever the name of your entry box is, it's entry. I'm going to use the get method, get it, and then print entry underscore output. Okay, just print that out and see what happens. So let's run that again. And if I put in there John, it prints that out. Change it up, prints it out every time. Perfect. Now what if I comment this out here and I use something else instead? I use the delete, for example. So what I can do is I can say print entry dot delete bracket zero bracket. Can you work out what that's gonna do? Well, let's test it out and find out anyway. There's my console. And I type in Jonathan. Now you'll notice inside the print statement, I put it inside a print statement so it prints out none. But look what's happened to Jonathan. It's removed this. If I press this button again, you'll notice that it takes one character off every time. So that means I don't need the print statement. Stop my program and I can run it again because it says entry.delete. So it's gonna act on the entry box. There's Jonathan again, this button, and you can remove each one. So not only can you delete uh, characters one by one, you can do something like entry.delete, open the brackets, and let's say zero comma two. In it goes again, Jonathan, and watch what happens this time. So the first parameter says where do you want to start and how many characters in total do you want to take? And it goes up to, but not including that number. So it takes zero and one and chops that off. If you want to chop more off, you just change the number in there, pause it, run it again. It goes back in and it chops more off. Happy days. Now make sure you comment these as we go, as we're just exploring some of the features that we can use here. And one thing that might be of interest to you is entry.delete, open the brackets, starting at zero, going to tk.end. Now the reason why that this might be of interest to you is because this, when it goes to tkn, no matter what the length of your string is that you type in there, it will remove everything. So Jonathan, it should go from zero all the way to TKN and remove everything. So that's how we clear our entry boxes. Now in addition, let's get rid of that. In addition, what we can do is we can insert things in there. So we can write entry dot insert. So from 
use TK end again. So TK end comma, let's say we was having an, um, an email address like that. Put an at symbol on there as well. I'm gonna, gonna basically insert something on the end hopefully. So I'll put this in here, run it again. Console, don't need that. But if I put in there, JBR, press the button and it automatically adds on to the end. So that's the, how the insert works. So you can specify where it begins and where you want to insert. So if I put in there, I don't know, two, it would go in at position two starting at zero. So zero, one, two. And that's how the insert works. So just to recap, in that video, we have used the entry boxes. We have applied a button onto there as well. And we've used the command feature in the buttons to run the procedures as and when we need them. And we've looked at three different things that entry boxes can do. We've looked at the retrieving text using the dot get, the deleting the text, which is dot delete. And then we've got the inserting text, which is dot insert. So have a play around with that. Practice makes perfect. Give it a go and I'll see you in the next video.